mission. If you have not subscribed to our channel, hit that subscribe button below. Also hit the bell notification, that way you know when we upload a video. Grab your coffee. We're going to get into the book of Luke this morning. And th these are parables that Jesus told that represent um, what it is for him to seek the lost and how God rejoices over us and the angels rejoice over us and fellow believers rejoice over us whenever we are saved. So it's just a really, um, it's a beautiful scripture. It's a little bit long, but I really feel like that this is going to really, really bless somebody and just help somebody out there to understand how much God loves you. This is Luke 15, and I'm going to begin in verse 1, and I'm going to read through verse 24. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And of course, they're drawing near to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke that parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And of course, um, the shepherds back then, if they lost a sheep, they would. They would leave the herd and they would go to search for the one that was lost to bring it back into the sheepfold. And, of course, this parable um, pertains to Jesus because he is the good shepherd and we are his sheep. And, uh, let's see. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And here we go. God is rejoicing whenever we are saved, when, when, um, when we come to Him and we put our faith in Jesus Christ, God rejoices. He rejoices over us. It, it's just, it's hard to imagine because we are so sinful that God rejoices over us when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, when we accept that free gift of salvation, but uh, He does. He rejoices over us because He loves us. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And of course, you know, these are the believers, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. This is everybody rejoicing over one person that has been saved. I, I mean, it's just almost unfathomable how much rejoicing is happening when one, just one person, one person is saved and is adopted in and brought into the kingdom of God. I say to you that likewise, oh, I'm sorry, uh, yes, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And here, a coin, it's not like, you know, a penny for us. This is probably going to be a silver coin or a gold coin, which was worth quite a bit um, back then. Uh, so here, the, the believer is being compared to uh, something of great value, which is, you know, the coin, the silver, the gold. Um, and when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors to gather, to, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And here, um, repent means to turn to Jesus, put your faith in Jesus. That is what that is. Um, turn from unbelief to belief in Jesus Christ. Uh, then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And this is basically his inheritance that he's asking um, his father to give him, and the father gives it to him. Um, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. And prodigal living means just wasteful living. He was just spending his money on all the things of the world. Um, very carelessly and recklessly. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. 
and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pots that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. So here, he is clearly, uh, he doesn't have anything to eat, he doesn't have any food, and he says that he would gladly eat the slop that's being fed, you know, to the pigs. Um, so that's how desperate that he is. Uh, but when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. So this is not the response that he had imagined in his mind. He thought he was going to go before his father and his father was going to make him as one of the servants. Um, and here the father is having compassion and is clearly filled with joy to see his son who had been lost. Um, and he is just hugging him on his neck and kissing him. Um, and the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. So here, the father is rejoicing over his son who was lost and is now found. He was an unbeliever, and he went out and he just went by the ways of the world, and then he realized that he had sinned against God, that he had sinned in the sight of his father. Um, and he came back, he came back humbly um, to his father, and his father rejoiced. His father rejoiced, and he called to have a feast. And that is, this represents our Heavenly Father, how he rejoices over one person that's lost, that gets saved, one person that comes to the Father, one person that comes back to the Father. He rejoices over us. So if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, don't wait. It is the most important decision that you can make in your entire life. He is coming back soon. Our days here are numbered. This body will die and we don't know when that will be. So please just don't wait. God loves you so much, loves us so much, that while we were still dead in sin, He came in the form of His Son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross. That's the penalty for sin is death. He took that penalty for us, died on that cross, was raised from the dead three days later to conquer the grave and death so that we can be reconciled back to God and have eternal life. He is alive and well and seated at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. And He loves you. He loves you and He wants you to repent. Turn from unbelief and put your faith in Jesus Christ. You will become a new man, be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and you will not regret it for one second. And you can have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I hope you have a blessed day. God willing, I will see you tomorrow. Shalom.